You're listening to The Taylor Marshall Show, Episode 50, The Seven Sorrows of Our Lady and How They Relate to the Seven Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is a mini-podcast. I'm be doing more of these in the weeks to come. We're coming up on Episode 52, which will be our one-year anniversary. And as we move into the second year, I'm trying to think of new ways to spice up the podcast. And one of the things I want to do is drop in occasional short, audible essays or mini-podcasts. Sometimes there's things that I think about that I think, you know, it'd be great to record something, but it's not really a full show that's produced. So these mini podcasts or these essays will be much more raw. They won't be produced. You won't notice the usual uh, music or intakes, outtakes, bumpers, all that. It's just going to be basically me um, riffing on a topic for anywhere from four to maybe eight minutes And, of course, we'll still continue to have the full feature ones, which are now anywhere from 30 minutes to 55 minutes. Um, But just, you know, if you see some of these shorter ones, this is what it is, an audible essay or a mini podcast. And now we'll go ahead with this. Oh, I also forgot this episode is also in video format. So if you go over to YouTube, you can watch this video um, with imagery, and it's very beautiful. I think you'll like the video even better than the audio. So go over to YouTube, check it out, my YouTube channel, Taylor Marshall, and please subscribe. Okay, here it is, The Seven Sorrows of Our Lady and the Seven Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Howdy, I'm really excited to share this interesting fact about the Seven Sorrows of Our Lady. Today is the feast day of the Seven Sorrows of Our Lady. And if you meditate upon these seven sorrows, you'll see that they correspond to the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. So tonight we're going to go through the seven sorrows and then see how they map over these seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, this all happens, of course, because Our Lady is the spouse of the Holy Spirit. She's the daughter of God the Father. She's the mother of God the Son, but she's the spouse of the Holy Spirit. We know that Mary's not a goddess, but we do know that she has a special relationship through Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, because she's Immaculate Conception, and because she's full of grace, which means she's full of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we're going to run through these seven uh, sorrows of Our Lady and see how they compare to these seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. So the first one is, and I have my iPad here, so I don't skip one by accident, the prophecy of St. Simeon. When Our Lady presents Christ at the temple, you'll remember Simeon comes, And he says, a sword will pierce your heart. This, of course, is fulfilled when Our Lady watches Christ die upon the cross and his side is pierced by the lance. We know from tradition and from Scripture that this sword pierces her spirit, her soul, her motherly heart. And this maps onto the gift of fear of the Lord. When she hears this from Simeon, she has a reverential fear of what will come in the Passion. Right? She, she doesn't necessarily know all the details of what will happen, but she has this sense of this fearful event. It will be the most painful event in her life. Tradition says she did not have pain in childbirth, but her great pain, her birth pangs, happened when she saw Christ die on the cross. So that's the first one. Now, the second one is the flight into Egypt. And this maps on to the gift of the Holy Spirit called piety. Piety is a form of justice. Piety is uh, giving to others what is due. We often think of it in a religious sense. But in this way, Mary showed piety towards God in, in her son, Jesus Christ, who's God the Son, but also towards her husband, St. Joseph. She cared for her husband when Joseph had the dream and said, we need to get to Egypt, we need to leave this land. She got up and started packing. So she was dutiful towards her husband and she was dutiful towards her son. And so we see piety, this gift of the Holy Spirit, uh, exemplified perfectly in Our Lady in the flight into Egypt. Now, the third one, the third sorrow of Our Lady, is the loss of the child Jesus in the temple when he was 12 years old. And this maps on to knowledge, because when she lost him and she went to find him, she finds Christ teaching. He's imparting the knowledge of God, this great wisdom, to the priest and the elders. And Our Lady recognizes that. Of course, she's alarmed that she lost them, and she's, re- she's relieved 
that after three days, which is a sign of the resurrection, after three days, she finds him imparting knowledge in his father's house. He's about his father's business. And of course, Our Lady was the greatest student of Christ. She received the greatest amount of knowledge from Christ. And so we see this encounter of Christ teaching in the temple, and then Our Lady finding him in that context that corresponds to knowledge. Now, number four is when Our Lady met Christ on the way to Calvary. You remember in, the, in Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Cross, it's my favorite part of that movie, where she goes to greet him, and she has that flashback where she sees a young Christ, three or four years old, falling down, and she goes out and, and lifts him up and embraces him and tries to ease his pain. But this time when he's carrying the cross, she can't necessarily embrace him and ease his pain. He has to keep going. As it says in the movie, it's a line from the book of Revelation. Christ says, Behold, I make all things new. So which gift of the Holy Spirit does this correspond to? Well, it corresponds to the gift of fortitude. Fortitude is also that virtue of strength courage, endurance. And so when Our Lady joins herself to the fortitude of Christ carrying the cross to Calvary, she strengthens herself to, to allow this to happen, to not protest, but to consent with the will of God for her son and his son. So she shows us this great gift of the Holy Spirit, fortitude, when she meets Christ on the way. Now the fifth one is when our Lord died upon the cross. And this is, it, it, it corresponds to counsel. And you might think, well, why is that? That doesn't necessarily seem like the proper, I mean, Mary wasn't counseling anyone at the foot of the cross. Um, but we do see this, uh, these last words with Christ to his mother, behold your mother, behold your son. And this idea of counsel um, also has the idea of advocacy. So Our Lady is at the foot of the cross. Because of the cross, she becomes um, a mediatrix, a co-redemptrix, and therefore she's able to counsel the faithful. She's able to bring us to Jesus. Jesus says to us, Behold your mother. And so this great gift of consolation comes to us through her counsel there at the foot of the cross. Now the sixth sorrow is Christ receiving his, I'm sorry, Our Lady receiving Christ from the cross. And this corresponds to the gift of the Holy Spirit, understanding. At that moment, no one understood what was going on. The Messiah of Israel, the Christ, this man who called himself the Son of Man, the Son of God, was dead. He was lifeless in the arms of his mother. The only person on earth that day that understood what was going on was Mary. She understood that this was the will of God, and she understood, as Christ had said so many times in his teaching, that he would rise again on the third day. So her holding the lifeless body of Christ corresponds to her gift of understanding. She understands what's going to happen. She's filled with sorrow, but she understands and has hope. And then the last sorrow is when they placed our Lord in the tomb, and they sealed it up. So they took our Lord from his mother's arms, and placed him in the tomb. And this corresponds with the greatest gift of the Holy Spirit, wisdom. Wisdom. You know, wisdom is seeing the big picture. Prudence is seeing, you know, wisdom applied to details. But wisdom is seeing sort of the cosmic order under, under divine providence and in the economy of grace. So when Christ is locked away in the tomb, The only person on earth who really sees this big picture, who has wisdom, you know, she is the seed of wisdom herself. She is the one who holds this pearl of wisdom as Christ's lifeless body is locked away. So there are the seven sorrows of Our Lady and the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit mapped together. I hope that's helpful. Use it in your meditation. Use it in your mental prayer. You'll go closer to Our Lady and you'll go closer to the Holy Spirit. Thanks so much. God bless.